in control in 2009, two best things I've been involved in are Women's Centre in Halifax, which we wrote a whole book about, and PFG in Doncaster, which is a people focus group. And I think they're both relevant to what you're saying. I mean, I'm not saying there's a solution, but they're both relevant. Women's Centre in Halifax is, is a, a voluntary organisation that really works, at the heart of it, is a kind of community, which is a combination of a few paid staff, women working through dreadful personal problems, domestic violence, alcohol abuse, mental health problems, and such. With, I mean, the, the women who are being sucked down into hell in Halifax and women who've come through the other side of that with the help of folk at Women's Centre and who then act as volunteers. And it seems to me that, so there's a lot more I can say about this because I think it's a, there's a whole load of things that you can learn from Women's Centre about what stops that happening. But some of it is certainly about community, some of it's about peer support, um, some of it's about commitment to not let go. You know, if you look at what Women's Centre does for these women in, in this kind of absolute extremes of hell, it's their commitment to just stick with it that seems to make the difference. Because partly in that commitment is a bond that enables people to, sub, to find, sub, to, and it can take a year to two years. So you said two years is kind of the maximum. Most people was within about two years. Um, it's, it is, it's the love and the trust and the possibility of hope. Mostly what's going on is, is people lose a sense of hope in their personal life. And uh, so I think that's a very, I mean, that, that's published in the stuff on the census website if you're interested. But I think that's very powerful. The PFG group is a group of people with um, mostly mental health problems, although it includes quite a few people with moderate learning disabilities. Uh, I was with them the um, day before yesterday, Wednesday. And I, I've kind of been on the journey with them again since 2009. And they've just become this most amazing thing. They don't have any money. They, they started when a social worker left Doncaster Metropolitan Borough Council, just fed up. She just, this isn't social <coughs> work. I'm not doing, you know, this isn't personalization. This isn't social work. I want to do the right thing. So she left. No money, just left. And she set herself up as an independent social worker in Doncaster. And um, her name's Kelly Hicks. She won Adult Social Worker of the Year 2011 for this work. And she's still working very, very hard at it. But what she did was people came to her, people with men mental health problems, many of them very significant, and these similar kind of patterns of behavior, alcohol addiction, all sorts of problems. She was doing really two things. Partly she was helping people get their rights, so she was challenging people around the lack of personal budgets for people with mental health problems in Doncaster. But she also, what turned out to be most powerful is in a sense she said, well, what can we do anyway? Well, the system fails us, what can we do anyway? And what she triggered really was the discovery in that those people's lives that they had enormous capacity to just help each other. So where I was with them on Wednesday is they've taken over a council building now. All this, as the council's funding collapses and these buildings become empty and these services stop functioning, they've just taken it over. And, and they figured out that the job of filling people's lives with interesting stuff to do is just quite good fun. It's stuff you can do together. It's not stuff that Kelly does for them, because she's doing brilliant social work. What she's doing is asking the right questions and getting people to pay attention to each other's needs and each other's gifts. They told a story about one of the members of the group who, um, her father had died, her mother had died a little earlier as well, and she was, she previously suffered extreme depression. She went to kill herself, and in Yorkshire, uh, one way to kill yourself is you drive right to the east coast and there's a big cliff and people throw themselves off. So she was driving there. She'd called the crisis mental health team, as often with the crisis mental health team, there was nobody there, they were dealing with another crisis. Seems like a flawed model to me, but anyway. She rang somebody on the group, kind of last resort, and he talked her into going to the police station, getting herself committed. She's then in the mental health hospital. The group then discovered in themselves this desire, capacity, passion 
to just figure out how to get her out. You know, she'd previously gone, when this had happened before, she, she'd been for <coughs> years. So they were committed to not having that happen again. So they set up constant kind of visitors and then helping her get out and keeping her safe. And they, they set up this idea of what they call support buddies, but it just boils out to helping each other. It ain't a big complex system, it ain't a complex set of time back in. It's just remembering that they can help each other. They have all the skills necessary to help each other. So I think it's something about recognising what people, not just people's needs, but people's gifts, and people's ability to create opportunities in peer relationships that don't happen in a kind of professional to use a horrible word. That Kelly's work flowered within months. You need commitment and passion more than time. Time, you, you've, you're going to spend the time anyway because you've got a system that's failing. There ain't no shortcut. You throw money at it, it won't make any difference. You're not going to fill people's lives with interesting things because you throw money at it. When what people need is a life. Life is what we do, it's not what you spend money on. I mean, the things that really challenge people is their poverty and things that are created by systemic factors that we're not addressing, but not by services. Mm -hmm.